Section 6.3, Logarithmic Functions. In 2010, a major earthquake struck Haiti, destroying or damaging over 285,000 homes. One year later, another, stronger earthquake devastated Japan, destroying or damaging over 332,000 buildings. Even though both caused substantial damage, the earthquake in, two, earthquake in 2011 was 100 times stronger than the earthquake in Haiti. How do we know? The magnitudes of the earthquakes are measured on a scale known as the Richter scale. The Haitian earthquake registered as a 7.0 on the Richter scale, whereas the Japanese earthquake registered a 9.0. The Richter scale is a base 10 logarithmic scale. In other words, an earthquake of magnitude 8 is not twice as great as an earthquake of magnitude 4. It is 810 to the 8 minus 4, which is 10 to the 4, which is 10,000 times as great. In this lesson, one of the things we'll discuss is the nature of the Richter scale and the base 10 function on which it depends, called the common logarithmic function. So suppose that we want to determine a Richter scale value based on the strength of an earthquake, which is commonly something wanted, that we need to do. We might have an earthquake, or an equation for that earthquake, like 10 to the x equals 500, if the earthquake was 500 times greater than another measurement. Solving this, as we did previously with our graphs on a, and equations in the calculator, is imprecise at best. To work with equations like this, we use the following definition. A logarithm, base b, of a positive number x satisfies the following for x greater than 0, b greater than 0, and b not equal to 1. y equals log base b of x is equivalent to b to the y equals x. Now the sentence that might be useful or helpful for this is y is the exponent on b to get x. The idea here is that the exponentiation is undone. These are actually inverse functions of each other. So the domain okay, for b to the x for our exponential, the domain was negative infinity to infinity, and the range was 0 to infinity. Because these are inverses of each other, the domain is 0 to infinity of a logarithm base b, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. And we'll discuss that more in the next section. For now, we want to focus on just the nature of what's going on. So we want to convert these logarithmic equations into exponential form. So we're going from this form to this form. So again, y is the exponent on b to get x. So y is the exponent on b to get x. That is, 6 to the 1 half equals the square root of 6. Now, all of these should be true equations once we're finished with them. 6 to the 1 half power equals the square root of x. All right. There's our b, there's our x, there's our y. y is the exponent that goes on b, so 3 to the second power, to get 9. 3 squared equals 9. All right. Now, we're going to go in the reverse direction. Okay, so y is the exponent that goes on b to get x. Well, in exponential form, that's our b, that's our y, and that's our x. So y is the exponent that goes on b to get x. Log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And this in itself is actually a pretty useful technique when it comes to solving equations of this type. Because sometimes the exponential form is helpful, and other times it's not. The logarithmic form actually gives us more information. All right, part b. 2 is the exponent that goes on 5 to get 25. 2 equals log base 5 of 25. And then for our last one, notice our base is always, it's the base of our logarithm and it's also the base of the exponent. So the base, our y, and our x, let's go ahead and label these. y is the exponent that goes on 10 
to make one ten thousandth. Negative four equals log base ten of one ten thousandth. Right, example three and four are similar in nature. Evaluate these. So what I'm going to do is write these log base four of sixty four equals x. Actually, I'll just I'm going to use y because that's what we've been using this whole time. So writing this in the exponential form would be four to the y because y is the exponent that goes on four to make sixty four. Now this actually tells me what y is because four to the third power is 64, which means that y equals 3, or log base 4 of 64 is 3. Example 4, we'll do the same thing. We'll write log base 3 of 1 27th equals y. Rewriting that would be 3 to the y equals 1 27th. Now I know that 3 to the 3 is 27. So 3 to the negative 3 equals 1 27th, which means y equals negative 3. Or we can say that logarithm is equal to minus 3. All right, now there are a couple of bases that are particularly useful, and they come up in natural occurrence. The first is the common logarithm. It's called the common logarithm with a base of 10. So often we write log base 10 of x as just log of x. And if you look on most calculators, you will find a log button. Okay, that is assumed as the base 10. So y equals log x is equivalent to 10 to the y equals x. 10 to the y equals x. So to evaluate y equals log of 1,000, that would be equivalently 10 to the y equals 1,000. And that would mean y is equal to 3. Right. Again, assume that is log base 10 whenever you just see a log. Next is evaluate y equals log of 321 to four decimals using a calculator. So the log button is right here on a TI calculator. You just type log, parentheses, 321, parentheses, and there's our answer. y equals 2.5065. Now to justify our answer, we can take 200 or 321 and put it between two powers of 10. This is bigger than 100, which is 10 squared, and less than 1,000, which is 10 cubed. Uh, let me switch those two. It's between those two meaning that the log is going to be between 2 and 3, 2.506. Right, example 7, back to our opening question. The amount of energy released from one earthquake was 500 times greater than the amount of energy released from another. The equation 10 to the x equals 500 represents the situation where x is the difference in magnitudes on the Richter scale to the nearest thousandth, what was the difference in magnitudes? Well, we have 10 to the x equals 500. So to evaluate or solve for x, we need to rewrite this as x equals log base 10 of 500, or we can simply write that as log of 500 which we can approximate in the calculator as 2.699, rounding to three decimal places because we're talking about the thousandth place. So the difference in magnitude
is approximately 2.699. That's when it's 500 times greater. One bonus to this is that it allows us to work with larger numbers when we talk, when we talk on a logarithmic scale. Things don't increase the way you think they would, but you can accommodate for things like 5,000 or 10,000 times greater like an earthquake. So they're very useful for that. The next common base is base E. When we have something written as base E, log base E of X is written as ln of X. That is the natural log. That's why it's ln. So ln of X is equal to or equivalent to E to the Y equals X. Since e to the x and ln x are inverses, ln of e to the x equals x for all x, and e to the natural log of x equals x for x greater than zero. It's a very handy function when it comes to solving some of these equations, as we'll see later. So evaluating ln of 500 in the calculator requires us to use the natural log ln button, which is closely associated with e to the x, because and those two are inverses, right? They're on the same button. Same thing with 10 to the x and log, they're inverses. Square and square root tends to be a common thing with calculator manufacturers. So if we were to type ln of 50, putting that at 500 in parentheses, then we get, we find that y equals 6.2146 approximately. And that's all we need to do there. All right, and that brings us to the end of this section on logarithms and be familiar with the idea of switching particularly from exponential form to logarithmic form. That will serve you well going forward.